Okay, so today's video is going to be about weeding your driveway. So, we're going to learn how to remove all this crap and then get on to the good stuff. Alright, so first you're going to want to make sure you have yourself a trowel and some nice gardening gloves. So we'll put the gloves on first and we're done. Okay, see? That was pretty easy, wasn't it? So, next we're going to learn how to fix a Jeep. Today, death wobble. So you're going to need two things. You need uh, mechanics, gloves, lack of uh, insanity, and a pretty large vocabulary of curse words. So as long as you know the secret word to make uh, you know each tool function, you should go uh, about as easily, right? Yeah. It's not because it's cheap or anything. So anyway, here we are with a 1989 Jeep Cherokee. Hey, beautiful. So, we got a steering box, and it's causing the fucking death wobbles. If you saw my previous video, you'll see that um, if you look at the pitman arm, you can see that thing bouncing around like a goddamn Mexican jumping bean. So, we are going to replace. Ugh. I redid the seal a while ago, probably a couple years or something like that, and it's held up fine, but you know. Big old tires, lots of stress and all that crap. Eventually it's gonna wear out your bushings in these stock boxes. So you can try and upgrade if you want, go to like a Durango or an S10 or any of those other numerous fucking upgrades, but I had a buddy and he's like, hey, my buddy's got a buddy with a bunch of boxes if you want one. Now let me tell you, partner, there are a few rules that you need to learn about automotive work. You got cheap, you got fast, and you got good. You can pick two. So. It was a good box and it was cheap, so it ain't gonna be fast. So waiting around a fucking month to get that. So once we finally got everything together and got that weird fucking uh, deal out of the way, finally got the box, decided, oh, well, you know, I'll send it to the company. Cause, uh, you know, again, 35s, things are bouncing around and loose. They might be nice to run a uh, hydro assist, you know? The ultimate steering stabilizer, you know, one that actually does something. So that way, you're taking the stress off of the side of the frame and the Jeep, and you're putting it, you know, directly on the axle. So you're taking out an entire, uh, you know, area of uh, movement. So that way, all the force is being pushed from the axle to the steering. So everything's together. You're not worrying about the track bar and the body and all that shit bouncing around. You know, you're, you're localizing your, um, your stress points. So that should make the frame last a lot longer and give us more responsive steering. So, I figured, sure, I'll call the guy up and say, hey, how much is a port job on one of your boxes? This is an AGR box. He goes, oh, $100 for the port. Okay, cool. If I wanted to get it rebuilt, how much is the rebuild? Uh, well, that'll be $295. Holy fucking shit, dude. $295 just to rebuild a box? Might as well fucking buy a new one. Oh, the new box is $550. Hmm, nice. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to get the port. Okay. Here's an RGA form or whatever. Fill it out, send it in. Okay, send it in. Get a phone call a week later. All right, here's the box, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna port it, we're gonna rebuild it. No, I mean, you know, all it's gonna be is like $30 more in bushings, so you might as well just get the full rebuild, so that'd be $3.95. Excuse me? What? I'm sorry? N no, I, I, I just want the port. Can we just do the port? Oh, no, I mean, we gotta take the whole box apart anyway. We're already in here. Cool. 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 Yeah, it's a little over my budget, man. Wasn't really planning on uh, doing that. Uh, all right, well, you know, I'll see what I can do. I mean, you know, I'm the owner. Oh, I, I could cut you a deal. What if, I mean, you know, you're already getting the port. You want to get the whole kit. I'll set you up with a kit for 900 and I'll throw in some fluid. You know, the kit normally goes for 1400 I'm like, all right, I mean, yeah, that's kind of a deal, but that's still a lot of money. But whatever, what can I do at this point, right? Look up online, their fucking kits on every other retailer are 1200 and it comes with a fucking steering pump. Seriously? I'm feeling a little ripped off here, buddy. So, anyway, rant, rant, rant. This isn't drama, this is Jeeps. No, no, wait, no, they're definitely related, okay. Well, anyhow, let's see uh, what you get after uh, paying way much more money for something that uh, you weren't really sure if you wanted just yet. Oh boy. Well, looks like they gave us a nice four pack over here, so this uh, should be about a four beer job. Nice. This is their fancy uh, rebranded whatever the fuck fluid that, you know, if you use, they'll extend your warranty by two years. Yay. 
and onto the big box. Nice old read this. None of that hickey you ya here. Gotta follow the rules on this one. So I got some hoses and uh, some other shit. Cool. Let's see, at nine hundred dollars and fucking a month of waiting gets you. I'm not salty. I've just been waiting a really long time. Uh, everyone likes misunderstandings over the phone. Getting woken up early to find out you owe ten times more than what you thought you were gonna pay. Am I right? Oh, look, a ram. Hmm. Okay. So that's what uh, nine hundred dollars gets you right there. A couple of ports, which they said were only a hundred dollars. Then when you send it in, they tell you, oh, well. You know, we gotta rebuild it while we're in here. It's only 30 bucks more for some bushings, so you might as well frickin' get the whole rebuild. Oh, by the way, the rebuild's 295 Yeah, $100 port job, my ass. But hey, you get a RAM and a universal kit. Yeah, that's, that's great, lovely. Did I mention I'm just a little salty? Because I'm just a little salty. Okay, so, at least the box looks like it was painted. Looks cleaner than when I sent it in, so I think they did something to it. Anyway, we're gonna put the box in. Alright, so anyway, yeah, here's the steering box. Getting a little more salty, looking up prices. You can get an entire kit for $1,200, so what did I really save $300 on? I don't know. And that kit comes with a pump. So what did he do? Cut me a $150 deal? I paid for the fucking fluid, so... I don't know, man. I might have to give him a call. I'm not really happy. It looks nice, but I feel like I got ripped off and fucking bent over. So anyway, we're gonna fucking put this fucking pile in. Thing better work. So, to uh, get this box out, we got three steering box bolts over here. Brighton, please, thank you. Okay. So those are things you want to make sure that are tight. Make sure you got tight bolts. Make sure you don't have a cracked frame. My steering, uh, my front bumper actually wraps around all three bolts, so I have not had frame crack issues. Yay! I've also got a beefy spacer. Although, my stock aluminum one, I don't remember if it was cracked or not, but I want to guess it was not. I don't remember it being really fucked up. But yeah, we got a heavy-duty spacer and all that crap, so it's definitely box stuff. Now, to get this guy out, we got a giant nut over here. We're going to need a pitman arm puller to get that off, because usually they're a pain in the dick. Uh, we're going to have two fluid lines, um, and however the hell you get the steering shaft off, and we can wiggle that free. So I might take out the uh, electric fan so that we can get better access from the top, and uh, just start ripping shit apart, really. So, you know, I guess it's time to get dirty. Okay, so for me, I had to uh, drop the sway bar because it was in the way. So this is uh, possibly a 33. 33 fits fairly snug, I guess. Maybe a 32. Maybe it's inch. I don't freaking know. Maybe it's one and one eighth. Who knows? Anyway, we're gonna take this Mac Daddy. We're gonna bust this nut real quick and get down to business. Oh, don't you worry. I'll do it on camera for you this time. That's how you bust a nut. Okay. Cool. So now if this doesn't come off with a sledge, we've got a puller because these things can be a real bitch. This is interesting. Listen to this. Hear that? It's like a click. Interesting. Yeah, but anyway, uh, beat and greed ain't really going to work, so we're just going to use this guy right here. Go to your local parts store. You can rent one of these bad boys. You're going to want the 27016, not the 27022. This one is bigger, although it comes in a smaller box. Believe me, you're gonna want the biggest one you can get. They put a little mushroom cap on there so you can't fuck this one. So we're gonna need a 17 mil wrench and uh, yeah. Put it on and start tightening her to gear Alright, so this two step right here is pretty simplistic. I'm gonna put this guy right here. We're gonna tighten it. So you gotta tighten it by hand. Because they don't want you to use Mr. Impact to break this. Understandable though. You know, they're letting you run it basically for free. Pay for it, return it, and they give you all your money back. So, tighten it, give it a little schmack. It'd be nice if I could get here, but this damn fucking thing's in the way. Can't really move it out of the way. But yeah, all you want to do is beat it. And the shock load should help free it up. And you'll notice that, because then this should be easier to tighten again. Oh, yeah, we're not. <laughs> You get the idea. Lube, maybe some heat, and uh, you know, some decent curse words in between. 
Okay, so I've been beating on this end, I've been beating here, I've been beating on the other side, beating here, I'm trying to beat everywhere. I uh, got maybe about a base of a turnout. She's pretty tight. Uh, I'm gonna try and start the engine and maybe just crank the wheel back and forth a little, see if any of that uh, movement helps. Uh, trying to clean the area helps. Brake clean, WD-40, all that. Clean and lube. Try and get a penetrant in as much as possible. Yeah, she's been a little bit of a bitch. That sounds good, don't it? Sounds real good. Did it actually loosen up at all? Oh yeah, she got a lot looser, holy. Now we're cooking, cool. That actually helped a ton. Maybe this thing will pop off now. That's a great idea. <laughs> oh yeah, buddy. She's moving now. Yeah, once you get her started, it'll start. Make sure to stay clear of the fucking landing zone. Look at that. Freedom fried. Cool. Now, a smart person would have had a nut on there. So, that way when this thing does let go, it'll actually get caught. Hey! Opa! Cool! Well, could have been worse. Also good to know that that's not tight at all. Cool. Oh, the joint's tight, but the uh, clamp isn't. Alright, that's one big thing out of the way. Uh, so besides the uh, gearbox bolts there, we gotta undo the lines. So maybe we'll see if we can get the lines while it's still being held in place. All right, save yourself the headache, get the earbox out of the way now. It's just three, three uh, fasteners. One nut, two bolts. So down here, got some cooler lines and stuff in the way, but we can see between the transmission stuff, the power steering lines are underneath. So I'll see if I can't move these up out of the way and uh, get to them. Spray them off, clean them. I may or may not take the fan out for extra help. We'll see. And then also on the back, whatever, thing takes the steering column off. That'll be another uh, learning experience, one I've never done before. Oh boy. Okay, well, I can tell you right now, you are not going to have a good time with this. Both of these are 18 millimeter, and I was able to break them free fairly easily. You know, I was able to break the nut off of the, um, the box, but I can't get the nut to spin freely on the tube. I'm pushing, I'm trying to work back and forth, plenty of lube, plenty of cleaning, all that crap, and it's, uh, eh, I don't know. I might have to get new tubes, this is not looking good. I'm gonna try and keep working on them, but they're stuck pretty good. Okay, well, my favorite part, if you can't fix it, fuck it. So, we twisted this thing up more than a freaking piece of pasta over here. That thing took quite a couple number of turns before it finally broke free, so, yeah, whatever. Rule number, uh, whatever the fuck of mechanics, if you have a drain pan, your tools are gonna fall into it. So we have a drain pan. Well, anyway, let's fuck the other ones so we can actually, uh, start working on getting this box out. Okay, so after you break off both your hard lines, then we can move over to getting the bolts out of the box over here. One, two, and three. Of course, you want to make sure that you take the top one out last. That way, it's the hardest one to get to and the box falls. And, you know, that's a fun game of catch. So, uh, that's a 5 ace. Uh, I had to break it free of the breaker bar. Just take it easy. Give it some lube. You know, it's not fun when they break. Luckily, I've had to take these out a couple times and put some anti-seize in them. So, they actually came out. Now, it's just down to uh, removing the, um, uh, the steering wheel shaft thing. The in-betweener wiener. So, uh, yeah, once I figure that out, I'll get back to you. I think it's probably just a little bolt that fucking slides out. It's just a bunch of splines. Okay, so we just got this little Loctited bolt here. 7 sixteenths. So that's just like in the side of this, John. I don't know if you can see it. There you go, that's the hole. So we undo that. I'm pretty sure that the shaft should be free. It's just getting it on and off is going to be interesting, so... I guess I'm going to get underneath and see if I can, um, you know, cradle that down and see if she slips out. Okay, so apparently the last step is also the hardest. Marks don't want to come out. It's just, just fucking flopping in the wind, man. She don't want to let go. It'll spin and stuff, but that's just the shaft and whatnot. It's not, uh, it's not coming off. 
I could go from the top, I guess, and try to hit it with a hammer, but uh, there's not really anyone at the bottom to catch it on the way down, so I don't know. A little strange, eh? Okay, cool. Sometimes you just need a three foot extension, you know? Never know when you might need it. It's great if you want to beat this shit out of something. So after really wailing on that, it finally frickin' let go. This little pad down here was nice to catch the landing enough to not crack the housing, so that's cool. Fuck, man. Little bastard. Yeah, this is a fun job. I also love my frickin' gloves are covered in grease. Okay, so that's the halfway point for the steering box. Yay! Now we can make room for that Bluetooth steering box we ordered. Alright, so here's the AGR box in the flesh. This is the number that I have for my uh, Jeep Cherokee XJ362251. So, here it is. This is a four bolt design. Since the XJ only has three mounting bolts, we're going to ignore one of them. But uh, yeah, not a whole lot to it. This is the ports. I could have used the box as is, but hey, I decided, ah, oh, we'll get the ports just in case, you know, we'd be prepared for the future. It won't be a lot of money, I swear. Interesting how that's installed, I guess. But yeah. There it is. All that fucking money we spent. <sighs> Damn sure, hope it's gonna be a good one. So anyway. You can see the collar right here, that's what that bolt goes into to actually keep the shaft engaged. There is a flat right there. Uh, so that will have to be aligned with the flat up here. Wherever the fuck that is, but I can't see it because of the goddamn sun. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to try and hoist that mother up there. See if we can't align the steering shaft, then we'll put the uh, brace in and bolt it. So once we get it mounted, we're doing good. There's that thing I was talking about, by the way, that little... Whatever the fuck you want to call that thing. Okay. Time to lift. Okay, so. I got the box hoisted up so it's sitting on the uh, sway bar. And kind of wiggled around. There's this little ledge. Got that right. So the fun part, making sure that the flat lines up for me. Where the bolt actually goes in. This side is the flat. So I just kind of lined it up with that. And tried to pull the box forward and angle it and... You know, eventually we'll get it. I had to take this guy and start beating on it right here. So I'd hit to try to force the thing on because I finally got it to like kind of line up, but it did, it just, you know, a lot of rust and crap. It's really hard forcing it through. Also, anti sees. I made sure to anti sees that. So next time we ever have to actually get it out of there, it might actually fucking come out. Cool. All right, so I got a feeling it's not supposed to be fully seated. We'll probably have to back it out a little bit so we can get our bolt through. That's what just holds it all together. And then once that's the case, we can start bolting it to the wall, to the frame. <sighs> Another fucking annoying little uh, complaint. The, the This box, if this was the box that I sent in, had the, um, the protective uh, port covers. Those little plastic uh, things to keep all the shit out of the fucking threads. Yeah, this one didn't come with any fucking covers. So when you go to install it, all the dirt wants to fall in there. Thanks, guys. Really liking this place. Okay, back from underneath. Make sure your spacer's in there. I'm going to use a bolt to align it and see if I can get it to uh, one of the easier bolt holes. So I'm going to uh, pick that up, slide it on there. Once we get one threaded, I'll get the other threaded again. Any C's so that the bolts actually uh, want to come out later in life. Seriously, it's worth the effort. Alright, so once we've successfully any C's them and uh, installed them all, everything is looking good, very nice, cool. Uh, we are going to torque them down, they get 70 foot-pounds. Okay, so they were nice enough to leave a mark so you can actually see where the center point is. So you can see the difference between the, uh, the sector shaft and the box. Cool. So we're going to take our pitning arm and we're going to slop it on there. So, yeah. Should be fun, right? Okay, so yeah, the next step. Just fucking pick up the pitman arm and put it in there, right? Yeah. Be a fucking fool if you think you can do this without taking off the goddamn fucking tie rod end over here. I've tried. I've tried so many times to move this around and fucking wiggle it and do whatever and I can get the fucking things to kind of align and it's just, I can't get the fucking thing to go in. I figured out oh, maybe I can try and thread the nut on. I thought I had it once and then I ended up fucking cross-threading and almost tearing the thread out. So fine. 
This is the kind of shit you gotta deal with when you're a fucking mechanic. Oh, you know, I'll, I'll fucking save myself fucking a minute not taking this thing off, right? And then you fucking wrestle with it for half an hour get pissed off. If you would've just sat there and took the fucking nut off, you'd be done by now, but no, no, we'll do it the easy way. Always do it the hard way the first time. It's just like, fuck you. God. Fuck you. Tell you one thing, Loctite really fucking does its job. These two nuts are locked together real well. Impact won't even take it apart. Everything's just rattling around, so. Just unthreaded that because it was already freaking loose. Uh, so, couldn't get it to go in this way the first time, so I turned it 90 degrees and, huh, fucking thing went right in. Okay, tried it the normal way, still won't fucking go in. Okay, turned it this way, huh, fucking thing goes in. So then I turned it back this way and mm, finally wiggled it in there. So now that it actually wants to go in, I wonder if we can thread this in and actually do it right this time. Come on! Step fucking around. I also don't like how crunchy this freaking box sounds. I'm spinning this around, man. It's just like... Gurgling and crunching and shit. I checked the paper towels. The paper towels aren't in there. There's no crap in there. But it just sounds like crunchy. <sighs> Dude, I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all. And you turn it to the right. Like all the way? Yeah, keep going. That's as far as it'll let me go. Okay, then go to the left. Is it supposed to keep going on and on? Yeah, start going to the right. God, that sounds terrible. Okay, thanks. Okay, so here we got the box out. <sighs> Tell you what, trying to fucking wrestle this goddamn uh, input shaft thing off. That collar is stuck on there so good. She doesn't want to come off easily. So, anyway. We have our little uh, channel lock boys. I'm hearing crunchy on this end. I'm kind of hearing it like all over. Like even down down in uh in in this section over here. Like around around this area. Somewhere somewhere in here. It's weird that it only really does it going right. Left it's not as loud or non existent. But yeah, it's just, I don't know, crunchy's all over. It's really weird. Uh, we, we talk back and forth a lot, and I think we finally got our shit straight, so... I'm gonna send this back and see what the hell he has to say about it. Uh, it's just frustrating. This Jeep has been down literally the entire year. I fixed it for one weekend, then the steering box blew, and it's just been shit ever since. Okay, so here we are two and a half fucking weeks later. Let's see what this fucking place has to show for themselves. Great turnaround time. Great customer service. Oh yeah. Really love it. Stop! Read this! If you're buying from us, we're probably fucking you over. Yay! Nothing like sending them a box, shipping it Monday, and getting there Wednesday, asking them Friday, hey, what's up with the box, and then going, uh, did you send a tracking number? Yeah, dude. I emailed it to you Monday when I fucking sent you the box. And I waited another week and asked, hey, what's up with the box? No response from email. Okay, fine. Call you Monday. Oh yeah, we'll get right back to you. You're next in line. Wait an hour. Nothing. Call back. No answer. Wait another hour. Call back. No answer. Call them right as they're about to close. Hey, the fuck's going on? Oh yeah, yeah, we got your tracking number. Oh cool, what was wrong with the old box? Oh, well, you know, we took it apart and there's like metal shavings in the worm gear and the bearing and stuff, man. It was really weird because like we look at these things through a microscope. Yeah, go eat a fucking dick. Christ, two and a half fucking week return time. So, again, no ports, no port plugs, awesome. Great, it's not like I'm trying to put this in a Jeep or anything where it's dirty. Wouldn't want to keep the ports clean, eh? Let's get out of this fucking bag. Because I don't know about you, but... Nothing quite says quality like a bag soaked in fucking oil when I'm trying to install this, yes. I love putting on gloves just to handle new parts. Mm-hmm. Thanks, guys. 
you're really fucking killing it. All right, so here's the new one. I don't know if this is the same box or just a different ring, because I know I fucked up these marks trying to get the old one out. I think the old one had um, holes as well, so it might be a different outer collar. It's actually, uh, you know, not finger tight this time, so that's at least nice. Number has been restamped, so I think that was originally a 7, but now it's a 362251. Pretty sure it's what we had last time. This is a 082619N. Different rear seal looking thing, whatever the hell that is. I've never actually seen that before. It's actually really weird looking. Uh, but anyway, I guess next is uh, we're going to start turning this and see if this one has the same shitty issues that the last one did. So when we were turning it, it was making all kinds of racket and shit. We'll have to do this two-handed. Okay, so this one passed the test. I was able to spin it all the way one way, all the way the other way. No weird, funny, crunchy sounds. Fluid, you know, kind of burping out wherever, but nothing nothing bad sounding, nothing stiff sounding. So, currently right now out of the box, it seems like it's functioning. Delightful. Second time's the charm, right? God, it's such a kick in the teeth, because the, the fucking, the old box that I sent had ports, so I did a better fucking job than they did. Just such an, ugh. So I guess we'll take some paper towel and crumple it up in there so we don't get any fucking dirt in there. And uh, we'll jam this fucking thing in. Okay. So now the fun part, you can go underneath and try and wedge the box so it uh, kind of sits in place. The sway bar is uh, helping to hold it up. And uh, the fun part of trying to align this damn steering shaft, since this thing isn't collapsible, it's a real pain in the ass to get it to line up. Because the box got to be at the right angle so you can actually slide it and move it and just... It's an all-around bitch, so... Right on, lube, hammer, lots of patience. Let's see if we can get this damn radiator hose out of the way so we have a little more room to work, but... Yeah, once we can get that to uh, engage, uh, we can put our bolt on if we want, and then bolt the damn thing in. Now, when we finally get to put the pitman arm on, this is 185 foot-pounds. Oh yeah, that's a monster. Glad I got a monster torque wrench. Sonic to the rescue, very nice. Yup. Alright, let's torque it. Okay, so I made sure to uh, test fit the pitman arm first and slop it on there so it actually freaking went on. And uh, once I found out that was good, then I threaded this back in and it actually lined up and went in first try, so that's cool. Way easier than the uh, last attempt. So, um, 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 the only thing I can think of is if your box is moved around, you have to make sure your box is in the center position because uh, the pitman arm is keyed so you can put it on uh, at 90 degree angles. So obviously you want to make sure that you know, you're putting it on right. It might be a little hard to mess up, but it's something to keep in mind. So anyway, like I said, 185 foot-pounds. So I'm going to crank the crap out of that. And uh, then the steering box is uh, installed. Then we can replace our broken lines, and then we might be able to actually start the damn thing once it's bled and all that shit, but you get the you get the point. So in case you're curious, 185 is tight as fucking shit. No jokes, fucking two feet on the axle, pulling for dear life. Having a breaker bar or a, a torque wrench this size does make it easy. Even my little wimpy noodle arms, I can uh, achieve that. But uh, yeah, there was probably another rotation and a half after tightening this on two. I didn't want to try it on three because I didn't know how far I was going to go, but uh, probably could have went on three and still had room to spare. So uh, yeah, cool. Let's torque down. Uh, so now I guess we can uh, fuck up the drag link and tighten that down so it's at the right angle. Uh, steering lines, and then we'll look into the bleeding. Excuse me while I passive aggressively shit on this company some more, but today's video not sponsored by Rock Auto, a company that'll actually get you parts same month. So we've got our two replacement hoses here. This is our return line, big rubber hose, fitting and all that good stuff. And this is the high pressure line, which is fitting on both ends. Because I uh, fucked the shit out of both of mine. This one even comes with O-rings, yay. Because O-rings are, uh, you know, important and stuff. Yeah. So I'm gonna see if we can wiggle this stuff out of um, our old power steering pump and put the new ones on. Ah, oh, God, I love these so much. Worst case scenario, you cut the hose and put a, um, a, a socket over top of it. That's one way to get the fucker out of you. Um, I'm pretty sure we don't want to touch that inner uh, adapter. We want, or, you know, the adapter at the bottom. We want this big john, so. Actually, huh, I wonder if we can put a nut on the bottom somehow to hold that in place. That way we can take this one out. We'll see. 
Oh god. And we might have to do this again sometime if I find out the stock pump isn't great, because they wouldn't fucking send me a goddamn pump. Bastards. Yeah, yeah, we'll give you a totally great discount on a full kit. Except, uh, you're not getting a full kit and you're not getting a fucking discount. Oh, yeah, thanks. No, 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 bro. We're charging you the services we told you we'd give you, but we have to give you a new box. So, yeah, we're giving you a discount, bro. Uh-huh, yeah. Except I gave you a box in return that I paid 200 for, so... Deal still seems pretty fucking even to me. Oh, time you fucking wasted. God. Imagine I'm not very happy. I'm not. Huh, not bad. So that's a 5 ace and uh, you know, a little WD, and I just took the sledge and tapped on this guy a little bit, and it broke free. Awesome. I mean, I did replace this a couple years ago when I put the new pump in, but that's great. Glad to see something fucking works. So, you can bet your friggin' ass I'm gonna make sure that there's uh, plenty of anti-seize on these motherfuckers in case they ever gotta come out again, because, uh, yeah, I'd rather not have to replace them again. Just a tip. The other one's really easy, it's just a uh, little hose clamp and you can pop that right off. Okay, so here's the two box fitting side by side. Um, might be a little hard to make out, but I'm pretty sure the one's bigger than the other. This one, I think, is bigger. So, okay, the return side is smaller. So hopefully uh, these two ports are different sizes, so that'll be nice. So if these thread in, uh, like I said, I'm gonna put anti-seize on this part right here where the nut's going to be living the rest of its life, because that's the part that you want to actually uh, twist. Usually the threads let go pretty easy, but it's the uh, the mating surface that you really want to get, because that's usually the problem child. So we're going to take our uh, homebrew plugs out and uh, thread these bad boys in. Don't forget your O-rings. The kit comes with one for every uh, thing, so put it on there. A little lube didn't hurt. All right, another lovely win for this company. The uh, <laughs> The amount of room you got to work here is absolutely incredible. I just love the fitment. So our high pressure line where this is, that's just like right in the way of this port. You'd say, oh, well the nut's in the way, but remember we're gonna have to put a fitting on there with the nut anyway, which might even be bigger than the uh, plug. So yeah, that's cool. We're gonna have to bend the stock line out of the way on that one. And same on the return line. We can't really bring it any far forward because it'll contact this one. So if we want, we could maybe push it in the back and then go underneath everything if there's room. But like, bro, fucking fantastic fit, man. I tell you what, that is just glorious. Glorious, I tell you. The hip. You won't find any quality here. If you're paying less for competition, they're not our competition. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. God. Yeah, it's hard to freaking compete with their incompetence, maybe. Okay, so if everything went well, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. So we got this guy tightened down. That's a 5 eighths. Um, this one did not come with two hose clamps, so I had to reuse the old one uh, for this side. That side we did have, so these were both 18s. I did finally get them to fit. I had to bend the uh, crap out of the high pressure line to uh, get around that damn fitting. But hey, what are you gonna do, right? So, um, as much fluid as I can get out of there is out of there. So I guess we'll start trying their new fancy bullshit and um, follow their bleeding instructions. If I recall, tires are gonna have to be off the ground, and you basically just rotate the wheel back and forth like 10 times and see if all the air's out. Okay, tires have been elevated off the ground. No, I'm not using jack stands because even if the jack fails, what's going to happen? It's just gonna land on the tires. So, we're gonna use some of their wonderful bullshit extreme performance. And see what this is. They recommend using this fancy stuff if you buy any of their pumps. Well, I'd love to, but you didn't give me one of your pumps, so. Looks like it's got a darker blue tint than, um, uh, whatever brand I use, the Valvoline. So, yep, we're gonna fill that up. Okay, cool. So that was almost half a quart, I think, about. So now, the fun part. We turn the wheel back and forth, he said, 20 to 30 times, checking every five to six to make sure that uh, there's still fluid in there. So sure, we'll fucking do that. So we spin the Wheel of Fortune all the way one way. What the fuck was that? 
Anyways, spin it all the way the other way. Lock to lock. Okay, then you do that a bunch more. Okay, I spun this thing about 15 times and the fluid level dropped. So it's probably around the low line now. So now we can add some more. And keep going. And rinse and repeat. Alright, so I spun this guy probably another 15, 16 times. There's a little aeration in the fluid. Uh, I don't know if it's really going up or down anymore. I kind of want to start it just to see. It's been a while since this thing's even started. There you go. Yeah. Looking good, no bubbles. Fluid didn't really go down. Alright, so here we are driving a little test run. So I wonder if we still got death wobble. unfortunate if we do. And there's still a little bit of a jingle in there. I wonder what else is loose. Yeah, there's still a little jiggle in there. Cool. So, the box wasn't the entire problem. Ah, fuck me. Yeah, still got that pop noise. So after some basic looking, figured out, maybe we'll measure it just in case. What ram length does that look like to you? Pretty sure that's an 8 inch frickin' ram there. And stock applications only need a 6 inch ram. So, AGR steering. Why the fuck did you send me an 8 inch ram when you know this was going in a stock XJ? Seriously. Not only were there not any fucking installation instructions for the RAM kit, and it's missing the power steering pump, but you're going to give me the wrong size fucking RAM. Oh, boy. It must take a lot of skill to be that fucking stupid, I tell you what. Oh. My. Fucking. God. Hey, it's not like it's Monday night and I'm going on trip Friday. Awesome. So, since we had a, uh, a rant install, let's also have a rant review. So, I've had this box for about six months now, and, uh, well, it's still in there. It's holding up, from what I can tell. So I guess that's good. I still have a little bit of leak from something. Hopefully that's the pump, or the reservoir. Just a pain in the ass. Still no, um, uh, hydro assist. Just running the stock ram for now, but it's actually measured properly, so it doesn't, uh, you know, blow itself apart like the last one. But anyway, yeah. What do I think of this steering box? Well... Uh, it turns the wheels. I haven't noticed uh, an increase in pressure at all. You know, it's it's not easier. If anything, I'd say it's harder to, uh, to turn the wheel. And uh, actually talking with that buddy of a buddy that said that he had a buddy with all the boxes, he eventually tried one and was like, hey, what do you think of this box? Does it feel like tight to you? I'm like, yeah. Like, it's just harder to turn. I don't know if having a higher performance pump would help that out. 
Uh, I've heard that there's a possibility that we can mod the stock pump where you drill out one of the uh, orifices a little bit bigger and that might increase the flow and make the turning easier. So if it's got a bigger ram and it just needs more flow to actually work, then okay. But again, if that is the case, why do I not have a pump to go with your freaking kit? That still bugs me. It just, oh my god. So yeah, if you want to find out the uh, the death wobble uh, problems, follow the next episode, because uh, I'm still trying to release these uh, chronologically, even though I'm uh, super behind. So um, yeah, a couple things that I forgot to mention. So with the box, when I was first talking to the guy, uh, he mentioned um, that if I'm getting a used box, it might just be easier to buy one brand new from them. Now, the part that he didn't really explain all that well is that the older, like, there's older and newer boxes. The castings have changed since he took over the company. And the older boxes would need to be machined differently to um, accept the modifications that they're doing. So, what he was saying is basically if uh, I gave him an old box, it would just be easier for them to use a new box. But he didn't make that very clear. That's why I was asking, hey, if I pick up this box, can you just do a port to it? A hundred dollar job, send it in, put some ports in, I get it back. But he didn't make it clear that since he couldn't do the work, what the, the deal that he was giving me was that he was giving me a brand new box, but only charging me for a port and a rebuild. So I saved 150 off a new box, but I didn't want a new box. I didn't want to pay for that. I only wanted the port. So if I would have known straight up about how much waiting, how much bullshit, uh, how not good the products were, you know, like the manufacturing that they did, I would have just said, no, just send me the box back. This isn't what I wanted. You know, that would have been the smart thing to do. But instead, I'm like, ah, oh, well, fuck it. I guess we'll go along with it since he's got the box. We'll see what happens. But no, that was fucking stupid. Oh, yeah. Another thing that uh, I remembered is uh, one of the things they were saying about the rebuild is so when they do a port, one of the things they do is they add a different valve for, I don't know if it was higher flow or something. So generally what they were saying is when you when you do the port and you have the hydro or whatever, your steering becomes less responsive because, you know, the fluid's got to go two different paths now. So what they do is they change the valving so that the steering is more sensitive. So that way when you're on the highway or whatever, it's it, it, it feels like it's back to normal. So this box supposedly has a higher valve whatever the fuck and every person i've talked to before they're like what do you mean higher valve i've never heard that before in a steering box so this box supposedly has a some fancy fast valve in it and i don't notice a difference like i said it feels like it's slower than the stock one was and this is with the valve so i don't know what the stock one was again this is probably just all shit he's tooting out of his ass and maybe i was supposed to get it but the box that they sent twice over didn't actually have it again that could be uh miscommunication within the company you know keeping track of customers orders and what they actually wanted what they're supposed to get instead of just you know putting a sticker on on a box and sending it out so that's another thing that pissed me off it's like really this is supposed to be a fancy box but it it just ugh. Ugh. So another thing, uh, the $30 upgrade thing, uh, he was mentioning something about either double double bearings or double seals. Apparently maybe there's the box is machined so it can it's got twice the bearing support on the pitman shaft, I think, or the sector shaft or whatever. I'm I'm not entirely sure, but that was some other upgrade when I was asking him, so why why are you quoting me 1400 for a 1200 kit? Oh, well, there's two versions of the new box, and one of them has more, it's double sealed and double bearings, so it's tighter and more better. Okay, great, but, you know, these are all things that would just be nice to know. Like, the company was just so confusing. The website wasn't very clear. I can see why this, this dude that I bought the box off had so many returns, because the boxes aren't great, and the company is just terrible. I really was not impressed with this entire experience. I haven't even bothered sending the um, the, the RAM back. You know, I probably have about $500 worth of parts that I didn't even use. But I don't even know if I want to com uh, contact the company because of how shit they are. But instead of just blindly hating and shitting on them, how about some worthwhile criticism? Because saying someone is bad is easy. Saying why they're bad is more difficult. So what didn't I enjoy? Number one, communication. Especially um, conveying what uh, the process is, or what is required, or what will happen, or what can't happen. So, if I would have known straight up, hey, we have two different castings 
an old casting and a new casting. If you have an old casting, we can't do the machining and it's going to cost you more. If they said that straight out, this will cost you more instead of just saying, oh, you'd be better off buying new. When you say that, you sound like, oh, just buy our new stuff because we're not making any money off a used thing. Make that clear. And you could even go the extra mile and say, hey, look at the box. And if this feature or that feature or something looks like this, you have an old one and it'll cost you more. That would have been extremely helpful because I called them before I bought the box and say, listen, if I do this, can you do this? Before I even got it. And from what it sounded like, it was yes. You get the box, you send it in, this will be a piece of cake. So communication, especially uh, explaining to customers about your products because the customer doesn't know shit about the product. And you do since you're the goddamn owner. Okay? That's number one. Make it clear what your products can and can't do and what you can and can't do to them. Uh, two is definitely uh, going to be customer management, uh, time management, turnaround time, things like that. Most of this was through email. Occasionally, I'd talk to them over the phone if I couldn't get a hold of them. Uh, Facebook Messenger was kind of useless. That was the first way I, I reached out to them. But seriously, dude, how hard are emails? I, I run my own side business, and I have a dedicated email just for the business. And I don't know what kind of ancient programs they're using, but they didn't even, like, they couldn't figure out that, oh, hey, this customer sent us emails in the past. You know, the, the second time when I had to return the old box that was broken... Or the, the new box that was broken, I'm sorry. Um, I sent them a tracking number in the email. said, okay, here's the return form. Uh, here is the shipping link. You know, everything is included. It should be here then. Okay, thanks. Uh, all the information that they needed. And then when I checked up on them, uh, you know, two or three or four days after it got there, they're like, did you send a tracking number? That I that blew my fucking mind. That I, I fucking lost it. Seriously. All from the same email. You should be able to scroll back and go, oh, hey, this customer has sent us this many emails. Let me look back at the previous one that he sent me and check. You know, check the record before you ask someone and have to wait for more, you know, back and forth phone call. That's stupid. That is so stupid. That drove me nuts. I gave him everything he needed and it's like he wasn't even fucking looking at it. That, that really fucking irked me. Um... Yeah, the deal thing, that that was pretty scummy. I mean, he, he woke me up early. It's not his fault that I wasn't awake at 10.30 in the morning. But the fact that, you know, he dumps everything on me like that and goes, Hey, uh, yeah, we, we can't do this. We have to do that. Uh, here's a deal, blah, 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 blah. And it, it didn't really seem clear. Once it was all broken down on um, the, uh, the sheet or whatever, I'm like, what the fuck am I saving any money on? Because all it showed was the exact pri prices of everything. You know, the fluid was the normal cost. The, you know, the RAM kit was the normal cost. Uh, the steering box was being charged for the port and the rebuild at normal cost. So I didn't understand why the fuck I was paying this guy $950 uh, if it's all the stock price. You know, he didn't make it clear that, oh, we're, we're just giving you a new box. Okay, so so here's the other thing. If you're giving us uh, new, new stuff, right? This isn't an exchange where you're not giving me uh, the same box back. That turnaround time should be spot on. Okay, there's no reason why you wouldn't have a box in stock with ports. That's insane. It takes you a week and a half just to get me something that's already built that's not my same box, unless you didn't have any and you're building it. Here's the other kicker, okay? When I finally uh, called them up after, I think it was a week or something like that, I'm like, so where's that box? Called them nothing, called them nothing, called them nothing. And finally they answered. They're like, oh, yeah, we were testing this box all night. You know, we make sure, we, we put them on the bench and we make sure that they're all okay. So they're claiming that they tested that box on whatever fucking system that they have all night and it was okay, ready to go, cool. And I get it, and it's full of metal shavings. Go eat a fucking dick, dude. Get the fuck out of here. That pissed me off the most. To say how much work that they put into all their testing and their, you know, machining to make sure that everything's okay, their quality control. Absolute fucking kick in the teeth. That really ticked me off. That fucking line, we check everything with a microscope. Oh my fucking God. But yet, you know, it's full of shit. That was the whole reason I got so pissed. What do you mean you can't do a port without a rebuild? Oh, well, we take it all apart to get all the stuff out. Well, apparently you fucking didn't. That's the biggest thing. I'm, I'm cheap, all right? If I can do something for cheap, that's what I do. I don't like to spend a lot of money unless I know it's necessary. I bought a $400 machine motor radiator. Why? Because it's not going to leak and it has a good warranty. I bought a really expensive Banks header. Why? Because it's got a good warranty and it's not going to crack. I don't know what the fuck I got with this box besides getting run around and bent over. So seriously, I'm just, I'm not happy with it. I'm 
not happy with the quality control. I'm not happy with their communication. I'm not happy with the way that that guy keeps track of his customers and runs his business. I'm just, and don't even let me get started on that fucking RAM. That was the other thing. I wasn't even sure if I was going to go Hydro Assist. I didn't get to look up kits. I didn't get to look up mounts, how people do it. If I could even run that on this particular axle, because I got a Dana 30 with the CAD motor, so this big fucking passenger side mount gets in the way, and it's just, there's not a lot of room for stuff. So, you know, the fact that I got wrangled into that kit when I wasn't really ready to order it, and then to find out it's not ready. They have a six inch kit and an eight inch kit. The eight inch kit is for aftermarket full ton uh, axles. And uh, the six inches for the regular uh, half tons. And I told him straight up, this is this is a stock axle, everything's stock. So the fact that he sent me an eight inch RAM just drives me nuts. So I didn't even get the right kit. Again, it's just, I'm, I'm so just, I'm over it. So would I recommend this company to a friend? Absolutely fucking not. You know, if I would have known all this, I don't think I would have even picked the box up. Or, if I did still go with the box, I wouldn't have sent it to them. At all. I would have just put it in and, you know, tried my luck. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend trying their boxes. I wouldn't recommend trying their services. I wouldn't even recommend contacting them because it's just a waste of fucking time. Honestly, they, they got a long way to go if they're going to make that company useful, happy, uh, helping the customer out. It's just, it was, it was just one shit show after another, so, yeah. Sorry this took uh, so long to come out, but it's just, it's shit like this, man. It, it almost makes it not fun to work on the Jeep and use it. Just, it's a fucking joke. So yeah, AGR, you know. Assholes getting rich. Fuck you. Anyway. Next video, or two, or three, or five, we'll finally get the death wobble figured out, and then we'll go to Moab. I think I did that like six months ago. Jeez.